When it comes to extinct animals that might still be alive, by far the most talked about of all of them is the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger. While they might have went extinct back in 1936, sightings of them still persist till modern day. But with so many people having failed to have found a living one out in Tasmania, a lot of people have been wondering if they could still be alive, possibly in other places across the world. Despite their nickname the Tasmanian Tiger, the thylacine actually once was able to have been found across all of Oceania, including mainland Australia and Papua New Guinea. With these carnivorous marsupials having once had such a large range, a lot of people speculate that it's almost guaranteed that there's at least a few still out there. So let's review all the evidence, ranging from photos to sighting claims, and even statements made by native tribes, to figure out once and for all, could this magnitude magnificent marsupial still be alive. So as a lot of you are probably wondering, why is it that they're more likely to be found in New Guinea, a place where they haven't been verified to have been existing in for thousands of years, over somewhere like Tasmania or even the Australian outback? Well, you see, it all comes down to why they went extinct on the mainland in the first place. While the Tasmanian tiger did evolve on the Australian continent to be its apex marsupial predator, the same does not apply to all of Australia's mammalian predators. Shortly after aboriginals arrived to the continent of Australia, they brought along another predator to assist them on their hunts. That predator was actually the dingo. Yes, believe it or not, dingoes are kind of not native to Australia. It's really complicated. Regardless of what they are though, as soon as they arrived, they shortly outcompeted the thylacine for food. And also, unlike many other predators, more similar to humans, a lot of canines are actually known for systematically killing off their competition. So on top of the dingoes outcompeting the thylacine for food, they would have also have likely directly killed these creatures as they saw them as a threat to their own survival. So really, with these creatures being the main reason why the thylacine is no longer around on mainland, land Australia. Due to how widespread the dingoes are, I think it's a pretty safe assumption to be made that there aren't any thylacine left in mainland Australia. Additionally, while Tasmania lacks dingoes, they do still have invasive foxes, and on top of this, with Tasmania being such a relatively small island compared to mainland Australia, if there were any thylacine left, they likely would have severe inbreeding issues and suffer severely from habitat loss. So really, this just leaves Papua New Guinea as being the only possible place left where these thylacine could still be surviving. And believe it or not, there's actually a lot of evidence to suggest this. Even though it's believed that the thylacine went extinct in Papua New Guinea about 3,000 years ago, there's really very little fossil evidence pointing one way or the other. Plus, just due to how remote and mountainous the island of New Guinea is, it is more than possible that there could be all sorts of amazing megafauna just waiting to be discovered. This is only aided by the rediscovery of the New Guinea singing dog, which is actually quite rare on the island. Unlike mainland Australia, which is ruled by dingoes, Papua New Guinea only has a handful of singing dogs left, meaning that the vast majority of the island is free of competition from these canines. So with the rediscovery of these large mammalian predators, what's to say there can't be another large mammalian predator still hiding somewhere deep in the mountain ranges of the island? One thing which many of the remote tribes of New Guinea report seeing is actually a currently undiscovered creature known as the striped dog. While it still remains to be confirmed if this striped dog even exists, let alone is still alive, the descriptions given by the native peoples of New Guinea seems to match match up almost perfectly with what would have been expected from a thylacine. Additionally, some of the guides that do go up into the mountainous regions of Papua have reported seeing other creatures which also match the description of the thylacine perfectly. But again, without verifiable photographic evidence, such claims remain dubious at best. It is also very important to keep in mind that when Western scientists do come up to explore these incredibly remote villages, it's usually not thylacines that they're looking for. On top of this, miscommunications caused by a significant language barrier could also lead to all sorts of different misunderstandings when it comes to Western scientists trying to gain a better understanding of New Guinea's wildlife through its native people. Yet again, in modern day, there isn't really any sort of creature that resembles a thylacine. So if these native tribes aren't talking about the Tasmanian tiger, then what other creature could they even possibly be talking about? To be honest, I don't have a single answer for that. 
Believe it or not though, that isn't even the biggest mystery when it comes to these thylacines possibly still existing in Papua. There's actually another even larger mystery that we need to talk about, but first, if you haven't done so yet, please feel free to like and subscribe, hit the little hype button thingy, because YouTube is my main source of income. Now assuming you've done that, we need to talk about the mysterious jawbone that was allegedly discovered. While the story is highly confusing and controversial, one of the scientists that was studying studying the Highland New Guinea singing dogs did allegedly get a photo of what was, according to the natives, the jawbone of a striped dog. Even though statements made by other scientists, such as Forrest Galante, do suggest that the jawbone was a perfect match with that of a thylacine, so far the pictures have not been released to the public, making the story very controversial and questionable to say the least. Regardless, it is unignorable that there is still a large possibility that the thylacine scene could still be out there. With sightings having had occurred all the way since the 1990s, and photographs like these showing creatures which appear to potentially be thylacine, it is almost undeniable that there's still a large chance that this unique species will end up being rediscovered in the near future. It also raises a lot of other questions, such as if the thylacine is still alive in New Guinea, to what degree would they be genetically distinct from their now extinct counterparts down in Tasmania? Yeah. Despite the thylacine being a general list, it still likely would have had some different adaptations considering the fact that the jungles of Papua New Guinea are still fairly different from the temperate rainforest found in Tasmania. Also now with colossal biosciences trying to bring the thylacine back, it also raises the question, should we be spending all this money trying to bring back this incredibly unique species, or should we first try to make sure with 100% certainty that the Tasmanian tiger is actually for sure extinct? The cat while cloning technology can be used to bring back some incredibly similar animals to what would have existed beforehand, as of right now we cannot bring back exact replicas of the species that have passed on. This is even more true for animals that lack any sort of close modern day equivalents, such as the thylacine. These creatures became a unique symbol of Tasmania for a reason, and that is because of just how special of a role they fitted in their ecosystem. As the last large marsupial predator, these animals were incredibly unique not just to Oceania but the world. And thankfully with just how large and unexplored of a place Papua New Guinea truly is, there's a very good chance these amazing marsupials are still alive in addition to a ton of other unique species just waiting to be discovered. With that being said, I'd say there's about a 50% chance that everyone's favorite marsupial wolf is still out there. Now before you click off, I try to make animal mini documentaries every single week so please feel free to like, subscribe, do all that YouTube-y stuff, and hopefully I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.